What are we doing today, Philippa? We are doing an oil change. <laughs> In all seriousness, we're doing a thousand hour engine service. All right, as opposed to an oil change. Hello, and welcome to a new video that I promised Ryan that I would film about eh, two years ago. When you watch the videos from Ryan's Tech Corner, Ryan is doing his thing while I am filming. And what you don't see is the amount of uh, um, <clears throat> debating that goes on behind the scene because uh, of a variety of reasons. But today we thought that it would be a fun thing if I was the one doing the technical work and Ryan was behind the camera. But because it's always more fun to do it with uh, somebody else, I invited my good friend Philippa to come and join me for this engine service. Hello. Philippa, how many times have you done an engine service before? Um, none. So this will be good. It's girls doing it for themselves. Welcome to Service and Engine with me, with Sophie and Philippa. Okay, so today we are not doing whatever service. What are we doing today, Philippa? We are doing an oil change. <laughs> we're off to a good start. <laughs> In all seriousness, we're doing a thousand hour engine service. All right, as opposed to an oil change. <laughs> as opposed to a hundred hour. <laughs> we totally get this. Okay, so every hundred hour that the engine is on, we need to change the oil, change the oil filter, the fuel filters, and we clean the engine room just to make sure that if anything happens to the engine, like we have an oil somewhere, we can see that something is wrong. Today, on top of doing those things, we are also going to change the coolant, we are going to change the impeller. And the one thing that we are not doing today is the inspection of the fuel injectors, which is something that Yanmar has to do. We do not have a Yanmar technician around us in Bonaire, so this is something that we're going to do a little bit later on. But uh, I think that this thousand hour service should keep us busy for uh, at, at least a, a good couple of hours. Or maybe the day. Depending on <laughs> how we get on. <laughs> Woo! We'll All be, right, we'll be great. We'll with, be great. With no further ado, let's get started. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do in this engine service is actually to change the coolant. And we are a little bit unsure of how exactly that's going to go. It is because this is not a Yanmar coolant. It is supposed to work with our engine, but we don't really know if it is different from the coolant that we already like already have. So we are not sure if we're going to need to flush the coolant that we already have before putting this one in. And they have red coolants, green coolants. Yes, yep. and you're not supposed to mix them. Yes. So the first step in this process is to assess the color of the coolant that we currently have in our system and see if it matches. Let's do it. Our first mission is to drain the coolant fluid. And for that, we need to locate the drain taps around our engine. We have three drain taps total that look like small knobs held with a nut and that are more or less accessible. So the first thing we're going to do is to take off the cap uh, of the coolant fluid as to not create a vacuum in the system. So to take the cap off, push down and twist almost 80 okay. degrees. Okay, so we have one of these, which is a pad to put oily things on. It's super absorbent, looks a little like a nappy, but it's not. So this goes on here to soak up any of the drips and spills. So here we have a rubber tube. Mm -hmm. This goes on one end just underneath here like this because the fluid is going to drain through, come out of the tube, and then we're going to put it in something that we can dispose of easily, which is this plastic bottle. So here we go. I'm going to undo it like so. Lefty Lucy. Yep, you want to do it to the left, anti-clockwise to open it. There is close to five liters. And as you can see, this is a six liter bottle. So now we need to screw it back clockwise so that it's completely tight. And we'll need to get our spanner to make sure that it's absolutely solid. So we're done draining the coolant and unfortunately the captain doesn't think that it looks very good. It does not look very good. So we're gonna have to flush the system of the old coolant, which is going to take a lot more time to do this service, but uh, yep, well, 
So what we're going to do is we need to flush through to clean out the coolant that was already there. So we've taken the same amount of water as coolant that came out and we're going to put it all back into here. We're going to turn on the engine, warm it up and flush it through. Now we're going to put the lid back on and it needs to be on firmly, obviously because when we put the engine on, it needs to be secure. So whilst we're waiting for that to cool down, we're not going to waste any time, we're going to change the impeller which is here. The other thing that we need to make sure that we do is we need to shut off the seacock. So as you can see at the moment, it is vertical to the pipe and we need to turn it so that none of fluid is coming through here. Okay, so this is a socket wrench and then we're going to place this on here. Here comes the water. Shall we get a quick cloth and then? Yeah, it's, it's going to be all right. We'll clean it up. There is the impeller. Look at it, it's beautiful. We're going to pull on each little finger here. I'm just going to wiggle all the way around to gently prise it out because it's seriously stuck in here, as you can see. I, I take one side, you take the other and okay. pull at the same time. One, two, three. Yay! Yay! Old impeller. Lovely. Okay, people, excuse the sucking noise in the background. It is just the oil coming out, so don't be alarmed. Okay, so new impeller, lubricant. The lubricant goes around like this, and that is just so that it can get into the impeller housing a little bit easier. You so have stay. lubricant <laughs> everywhere on you, feedback. Oh, it's really heating my hands up. Why is it heating my hands up? Is it really? Yeah. So now we're going to place this in here. And don't worry if its little fingers get bent. It is a bit of a job to get it in, but that is fine if they get a little bent. And then you just gently push in and it should go in easier with the lubricant. <laughs> Woohoo! We're in! We're in! So once you have put the bolts back onto the impeller housing, just pull up the seacock so it's in line with the pipe so that you have water coming through. Good job. Okay guys, the next step in our process is to pump out the oil so that we can replace it. And for that, we're gonna need this little guy here. Oh, gross. Mm, this is not going to be a pleasant job. Yay, look at that pump. Okay, so I received very specific instructions on how to do this. So uh, well, let's go. We will remove the oil cap as to not create a vacuum in the system. Okay, that is one. And we have this one right here, and I'll just open it, and then yeah, loosely put it on. So in order to pump out, I am going to go remove the dipstick here. Up, that's the dipstick. This is how we control the oil level and the color of the oil. I am going to insert that guy into the dipstick all the way down. Okay, all the way down. And now we pump. It's absolutely working. The pipe is empty. Okay, okay. And now we're going to do the same thing with the gearbox. Mm. Careful because there's a little O-ring. I, I can see the O-ring. And off we go. Okay, so since I'm back here, i.e. in our bedroom, this is my bed, this is the engine, I am going to put the new gearbox oil in the gearbox. It is an SAE30, which is for the gearbox. 
it's different than the oil that we put for the engine. Funnel, oil, constricted space. Let's do this. Okay, so on top of putting a specific type of oil in the gearbox, we need to put a very specific quantity. In our case, 500 millimeters. And so I am going to pour until we're about here in the bottle. I have this little measure here. And that's it. We have changed the gearbox oil. The oil is sucked out, the impeller is replaced, now it's time to replace the uh, oil filter. And that's gonna be a fun job. We're gonna put this oil absorbent rag under this fuel filter because things are about to get nasty, okay? And then uh, we're gonna use this tool here. Right. Okay, and then righty tidy, lefty loosey. Yep. Oh, it's coming everywhere. Shit. Shit. Yeah, goes. Okay, and I made a mess. You actually did pretty good with that. Uh, there's some leaks a little bit. Okay guys, we changed the oil filter. That was a little gross. Okay, so we're going to fill up the engine with diesel engine oil. So here's the cap. So I'm just taking that off from here. Place this down here safely so we don't lose it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pierce this through the tissue, like so, just because it's a really large container and when we're pouring it, we don't want to spill any anywhere. So bad oil, bad. Bad oil. Here we go. Woohoo! Oh, look at all that oil. It looks like treacle. Looks like what? Treacle. What is that? Treacle is a sugar that you put on pancakes. <laughs> Would you put this on your pancakes? Mm, debatable. Coming up on here, give it a little shake. And as you can see, it's collected some of the residue so it hasn't gone on top of the engine. So I'm going to place the cap back on the oil. Like so, making sure it's nice and tight. Voila! Yay! So it is I was... currently uh, 3.20. When did we start this again? 10 o'clock. Oh damn. So yeah, this is taking its little time and now we are getting into the gross stuff. It's gonna get messy, people. <laughs> so there are two ways of changing the fuel filters. One of them is to fill the fuel filter with fuel when you put it back on. The other way is to put it back on empty and pump fuel in manually until there is fuel in the system. Because we're proper and clean, we're going to go with the second alternative, which is that we're going to pump fuel in because we don't want messy. On a scale from 0 to 10, Philippa, how excited are you for this? 10! Mm, wow, I'm, I'm like, I'm at a four, I'm at a four. Hello everyone and welcome to my bedroom. This is my bed. The bed is in the way! Ouch! Oh, that hurt! Oh, this is, this is the mattress. I'm over this already. In your life, do you need to wrestle with your mattress? No. Probably not. Welcome to boat life. Uh, when did I sign up for this again? Come, come dig with me. And that's it. I have a huge bruise on my head, but uh, the fuel tank is off. Okay, so we're going to take one of these and we're going to place it underneath the fuel filter, like so. So we have our nappy in place. 
And then we're going to take our wrench, which is round the fuel filter. Now we do this because it's the easiest thing to put round there. As you can see, it's a little bit difficult. So then we're going to pull this back a little bit. Okay, and while Philippa unscrew this filter, I am going to tell you a story about the first time that Ryan tried to do it. He broke four tools, four of those red tools in the process. And that is because one day he realized that because the filter is upside down, uh, he had to go uh, counterclockwise. Philippa versus the fuel filter. Go, go, go. Okay, this is the moment of truth. This is the moment. Yes, Philippa. Amazing. Go, 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 girl. Go, 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 Good go, job. go. So we're just going to lubricate the fuel filter. So put a little bit around here just so that when it goes on, it goes on with ease. And then it goes back in place. All right, and uh, while Philippa is uh, screwing this new filter on, I just want to mention here that not a drop of diesel leaked off this nappy. We totally managed this. I don't know about you, Philippa, but that ice cream. It's calling us. It's calling us. Are you going to have treacle with yours? What is treacle? We're tired. Okay, so now we're going to change the filter here, and this is the pre-filter. Now, the fuel can come out of here when we change this filter, but with this, it can come out from both ends. So we need to be extra careful because this is extra messy. Hence, the double nappy. Okay. Uh, under here, we have a little nut, and we're going to use this to undo the top. So we have the right size fitting here, Oh, 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 all right, we have changed the fuel filter. Is your, is your hand full of fuel? Mine too. High five. Gross. Oh, my legs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, grandma is... Uh... I need a nap. Before I can get that, I need to go reopen the fuel line so that we can pump fuel into the system. Ah. Okay, the fuel is on again. So now, one of us is going to be pumping fuel back in the system to get rid of all the bubbles. And I nominate Ryan for this job, while Philippa and I are going to drain the coolant fluids, which now is water. And we're going to look at what color the coolant is, I mean the water is, before deciding if we're going to put the new coolant on or not today. Thank you for your contribution, honey. We appreciate it. Love you! We this are bleeding the fuel system, and as you can see, where it's being pumped, there's a little bit of air coming out of here. You can probably just see it slightly bubbling, and that's air coming out of the system, and we need to do that, otherwise the engine will not start. Go. Ah, oh, that's so nice. So this is how it looks, and I don't think it's good. We're gonna play guess what what. One of those bottles is the coolant and the other one is the water that we just drained. Obviously, neither of those look good. So we are not going to replace the coolant today. We are gonna put back water in the system uh, to flush it again. We're gonna do a little more research tonight. Tomorrow, Ryan is going to go to the chandler to try to find some uh, product maybe. and. Apart from that, we are actually done with the engine service. We're just waiting for Ryan to pump uh, fuel in the system a little more, but how's it going, Ryan? It's taking a long time. You know what you can do in the meantime, though? Cleaning. But before we can go out for ice cream, one of the most important thing is how we dispose of all that waste. So the oil that was used is going to go back in the container of oil, the one that's brand new. And then the fuel filters, we'll put them in a plastic bag. We'll go to the marina tomorrow and dispose of those fuel filters the appropriate way. Normally in every harbor, there is a way to dispose of those fuel filters. Like they cannot go in regular waste. They need to be disposed of in specific places. 
I'd love a glass of wine right now. Yes, me too. I currently have eau de diesel. It works! Yes! The tractor is working. The tractor is working. How is that, Ryan? Yeah, good. It's very rare that it starts the first time like this. Magnificent.